I really wanted to draw some faces but I didn't have much time to get my paints out so I thought doing some quick portrait studies with markers would be perfect as these don't take me very long but they do help me with getting some practice in and you may have seen my gouache portraits that I love to do with monochrome so I thought I would give monochromatic portraits a try with alcohol markers and I have done these before but I did them in a slightly different style and I wanted to try to be a bit looser with these so I want to take you along with my process and also answer some questions I got from a recent q and I did on Instagram. And before we get started, I wanted to thank Ohuhu so much for sponsoring this video and sending me these really lovely bamboo displays for my markers. I love having all my markers out and being able to see the colours really easily. I feel like I'm in an art shop when I look at the markers displayed like this. And it also goes without saying that I love these markers, I've been using them for a while now and I just find them really great. So thank you so much Ohuhu for sponsoring and let's get started. So I got a lot of interesting questions sent to me and if you haven't seen my videos before I currently consider myself a part-time artist as I do art on the side of a full-time job and this is a fairly recent change for me as I did spend around a year and eight-ish months doing art full-time. You can hear more about that experience in this video I'm linking here. But anyway, I've had to adjust to a different schedule. I've been struggling to find time to do art consistently, so I'm getting used to finding those small windows of time and just doing art even if I'm not inspired or even if it's just playing in my sketchbook, like with these portraits. One of the questions I got was, what are my current art goals? And I have a few art goals this year, starting with the first one, which is just have fun. And to me, that really means feeling joy from the process and feeling satisfied with what I'm creating. I don't wanna limit myself to a medium or a particular subject or style, I want to do what I feel like doing in the moment. I'm relatively good at listening to myself and following my heart with these things but I can sometimes slip into those thoughts of I should be making this because it will be more popular or more liked on social media or YouTube. So that's something I really have at the forefront of my goals with my art this year to just follow my heart, do what feels good and have fun with it. And then I have two more goals. The second is to be consistent with creating, even though I have less time. I know I need art to be part of my life with consistency as it makes me really happy and just has so many positive benefits on my mental health and the way I see myself. So uploading videos with consistency and putting stuff out there is also part of this goal too, because I really enjoy that aspect a lot as well. And the third goal has to do with fulfilling certain visions I have on more final pieces and illustrations. And this sounds a bit vague, but I'm essentially exploring using my art in different ways. I've been doing these collages with my gouache paintings and I'm really loving creating these more final illustrative pieces. And I have so many ideas for where this can go. This is very much the beginning stages of it. So I really want to explore the possibilities with this style. Someone asked how I began to get YouTube sponsorships and this is a great question and one I was definitely curious about too when I first started YouTube. So I started my channel about a year and a half ago and you can have a look at how many full length videos I've posted. Um, so not counting YouTube shorts, I think it's around 30 and I it was once I reached around 5 to 10,000 subscribers on YouTube so that was several videos in I think around 8 maybe 9 that I began to get emails from brands asking if I wanted to par partner with them and I say how many videos I made just to give an idea that having a portfolio of what you can do and the style and quality of your videos is also a really important factor beyond how many subscribers you have Obviously at the beginning I was pretty clueless, I relied on online resources and other videos I would find on YouTube in order to understand how much I should charge. I also asked ChatGPT a lot um, and I will say that to this day there is no definitive answer to this, it's very much a case by case basis but yeah initially it was waiting for brands to reach out and I didn't do any reaching out at the beginning, I just began to get emails 
And then when I worked with brands that I really liked, I would make sure to keep in contact and reach out periodically to ask if they wanted to continue to work on more videos together. I think it's a good tip if you do get an opportunity of working with a brand you like to definitely ask them if they would like to partner again. Asking doesn't hurt. I'm obviously a relatively small creator on this platform, so my experience may be more suited to someone in the beginning stages of kind of setting up a YouTube channel and working with brands and stuff like that. After I began understanding a bit more about how brands worked with creators through just receiving emails and doing a bit of online research, and honestly ChatGPT really helped with some of the basic questions I had, I began to search for different art brands and similar companies that had ambassador programs or different partnering programs which required you to fill out an online form. So I would also recommend searching for those and filling those out, and I did end up having a few brands reach out to me that way too. I think it's a bit of a snowball effect. Once I got some sponsorship experience, it helped to showcase how I could make these integrations so that other brands could see the type of video I could make. And at the beginning, I would get really excited when a brand would reach out to ask uh, to partner with me, but I definitely learned that not everything was the right fit or the right partnership and saying no to things that didn't fit with my channel and audience is super important to me, not only because it doesn't align with me and what I do, but also being selective helps to maintain a quality and expectation of what your channel is or my channel is. Sponsorships are one way of monetizing your art, which I don't think should be seen as a bad thing. They, this isn't the main reason why I'm on YouTube, but it's a huge help to have sponsorships in order to subsidize the cost of materials, for example, and help me diversify my income a little bit. Even if it's not a ton of money at this point, it's a bit extra, so it always helps. And it also acknowledges there is a value in what I'm creating. Not that you need to make money off of something in order for it to have inherent value, obviously, but as an artist that is not exhibiting in galleries or selling paintings, like in a traditional way, having a YouTube channel and sponsorships is one way that I can kind of establish my career in art. I'm not saying it's the best way or the, the only way, but it's one way, so I'm really grateful for it. Another question I got was how does it feel to dedicate yourself solely to your art? And so as I mentioned, I no longer dedicate myself solely to my art because I now have a 9 to 5 job and I do art on the side. And when I was doing art full time, it felt really lovely, as well as a mix of many other feelings, which I go more into in that video that I mentioned previously. However, I will say that now that I have to make art in a time constrained manner, uh, time is more of a precious resource. I'm actually seeing some progress in different ways because I have to force myself to make art when I'm not inspired, which is making me see how creativity actually flourishes more in me at least when I have more constraints and limits around me. Before, if I didn't feel in the mood, I had the luxury of time to wait it out. Now I don't, so I push myself and I end up discovering something or having a new idea that I wouldn't have had if I just waited for the moment to feel inspired. For example, recently I was traveling and I didn't have my paints with me, but I found this box of oil pastels where I was staying and I had a spare moment. I just sat there and played with them and I really loved that feeling a lot, but it was within the constraints of not having my materials and not having much time that pushed me to try something new and find a solution around it. What emotions did you experience when you finally decided to do art full time? When I quit my job to do art full time, I mainly felt excitement and relief to be leaving a job that was making me unhappy. And as I said, it was a whirlwind of emotions throughout that period of time, that year and eight months. Like I wasn't constantly excited and relieved. I did experience stress too, but that first step of deciding to do art full time was one of pure happiness and excitement. And I had gone through some health stuff too, and I had regained my health back. And so I also felt very like live in the moment type of feeling. And the decision was very much the, the right one and the best one for me at that time in my life. Definitely watch that video about quitting my job to do art full time. I talk a lot more about this in that video. 
how do you deal with fear in your art? This is a really interesting question as I don't think I really have fear in my art itself per se. I think when I felt fear or I don't know if fear is too strong of a word but maybe anxiety, it's around the content creation side of things like keeping on top of algorithms or wanting to grow my online presence. Those things give me anxiety and can sometimes stifle my artistic growth. But I am learning how to change my outlook on this and I have always kind of checked in with myself about this to make sure it doesn't make me go off the track with my art. Um, but also being on social media and exposed to so many incredible artists and art all the time makes me want to try different types of art and can sometimes distract me. Like I see so much that I think I then also want to do what I see and the reality is that I can lose focus. I think it's completely fine to be inspired by a diverse range of art styles and art and to want to try it out but right now I'm trying to hone in on a few particular things so being so constantly exposed to so much on social media can be a big distraction so I think that's where the anxiety comes from not so much the art making itself I feel very at peace with where I'm at in my art progress it never makes me feel bad to see amazing art from other people that are like way ahead of me in terms of level. I think that's due to a process I went through with my art journey in general of having failed art in high school and then reconnecting with it again later on in life. I also have a video where I explain that a bit more but yeah I don't think I feel fear with art creation just more so the processes around putting your art online probably. How can I improve on painting portraits using gouache? So I think the annoying and obvious answer is to practice. So let's skip over that part because I feel like it's a bit obvious to be told that. So to speak on my experience so far, when I first started doing portraits, even before painting them, I was drawing them a lot and identifying what areas I needed to improve on. Once I realized I needed to work on building the face to get the anatomy correct, I practiced that with the intention of doing that basically and using videos on YouTube to instruct me on how to do this and even what I'm doing right now is great practice on building the face and learning color value so I never really stopped practicing um, but yeah once I felt like I wanted to dive in with paint I just began and with every portrait I painted I observed what I felt was working and what I realized wasn't and with that in mind I would do the next so I guess I, what I'm saying is that repetition is obviously useful but repetition with observation and truly engaging critically in what you're making is even more useful because you're guiding yourself through the process and I think it also helps you take out any bad emotions you may feel when creating like you know when you make something and it doesn't come out the way you wanted it to come out and you feel frustrated well I think looking at it critically really helps you ask okay why didn't this work and what do I need to do more of and I think truly this is what has helped me progress with painting and kind of let go of any bad feelings of like oh no this didn't come out like I can't do this instead of being like okay it doesn't look like I want it to look why and then kind of going from there What's your favourite medium? So gouache will always be up there as my favourite, but I really also enjoy markers because they feel so playful and childlike in a way. And also you can't really go over your mistakes with markers, which I think helps with artistic development. It helps me be less precious, but with precision, if that makes sense. Um, you kind of have to go for it, but not in a mindless way. Like when I tried oil pastels, I felt very similar in the playfulness aspect, but they felt more forgiving. So I was a bit more mindless with them. But with markers, I don't know, I guess I, I the way I use them, I really have to concentrate and I really like how they've taught me different things and actually influenced my painting style a little bit too. How do you choose your colour palette? So I have an admission to make which is that I don't think I truly understand colour as much as I wish I did which is partly why everything I always paint has all the colours like I don't really have a distinctive palette because well I'm firstly I'm drawn to all the bright colours but secondly I don't have a true understanding of how colours go together that well like I know some of the basics for sure but this is something I really want to work on and learn about. I love seeing how artists work with distinctive colour palettes and how they're able to choose what goes well with what in such a, what seems like intuitive way. 
Um, but that's kind of how my monochromatic portraits were born with gouache was essentially I was so overwhelmed by all the colors that I was like let me just simplify this and just paint with one color mixed with white and I think that stripping it back to basics really helps and that's where I'm kind of starting on understanding colour and my colour journey. I've been here a while but I really want to, you know, learn more about it for sure. What's your favourite thing to paint? So as I said, I love painting portraits and I also really love painting fruit. I love bright colours, so fruit is the perfect subject and I love capturing sunlight and shadow and when it hits fruit, it just it does magic. So I love painting fruit and I love faces. Faces are just so interesting to look at and paint. So that's why I also love them as artistic subjects. Okay, I'm going to stop here with the questions. I really hope they were useful in some way, but definitely feel free to ask me more questions in the comments below. I always try to answer all the comments I can. Um, and thank you so much again, Ahuhu, for sponsoring this video. I love these markers. Do check out the bamboo display sets. They are really cool. And I will see you in my next video. Bye. Mm -hmm.